Good morning, good afternoon, or good <laughs> evening. This is the Bloody Broken Beer Sports Show. We are your hosts, Klutz and Das. Oh, Thank you for joining. Not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the, the Bloody Broken Beers podcast. Uh, we used to review craft beers on Facebook, and now we bring you the conversations you'd more than likely hear from the front bar of your local. And where are we coming from, Josh? Uh, it's our local, which is the Caxton Hotel on Petrie Terrace in fucking Queensland, Queensland. Brisbane, baby. <laughs> Jeez, we get horny for Queensland. Yeah, we do. This um, is our sports show, a uh, weekly sports show. If you're here for in-depth analysis, hard-hitting facts um, and X's and O's, probably find a new podcast because that's yeah. not what this is about. That's it. That's it. I do have one good stat today, but that's it because we're not really about stats. Shit, no. So, um, no, it's great to be back. It's been a wonderful world in sports. Before we get into the wonderful world of sports, though, something yeah. I'd like to get into. Yeah. These two lovely cans of bloke. Oh, fucking right. We got the mini today, throat. which yeah. I'm pretty, pretty excited for. Uh, cheers. Hey, cheers, bro. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah. Bloke in a bar. Thank you so much for the support. We love you, Kempi. Um, oh, February 1st. February 1st, 6 p.m. Bloke's doing the end of summer 50 hour, 50% off sale on all their merch. I'm actually wearing one of the new shirts, Country Bloke. You can see it if you're on YouTube. He is a big... Hunk of country spunk. So they got brand new merch launching and it'll be 50% off for launch. $25 for a shirt plus all their other stuff. Party shirts, caps, boardies, thongs, everything. Thank you so much for the support of the podcast, Kempi. And if you're out there listening, please get around him. February 1st, 6 p.m. All I can say is like this shirt, you need to turn up. Turn up. Turn up. 50% off for 50 hours, February 1st, 6 p.m. Go to bloke.shop. Bloke.shop.com. No, bloke.shop. Bloke.shop, sorry. Yeah. I, I butchered that. Um, if anyone's watching on YouTube, they'll notice that Klutzy's had a fucking work computer for like two days. Yeah. And now he's rocking up to the podcast with it. Yeah, so <laughs> if you direct your attention here, Darcy, this is, um, this is the note section yep. of the MacBook Pro. Yeah, very impressed, it's Josh. A, it's a 13 inch. Yeah, huge. Um, so Not it's used to those sort of sizes, are we? It's going to be a fucking 12 and a half inches on me. <laughs> So, um, yeah, this is possibly one of the biggest things I've ever seen. I don't know why. I've had one of these since day dot of the podcast. I probably should have been using mine every week. But I was having a chat with Dad the other day, and I think it'll look quite profesh. Yeah, maybe from so now on. I, I can probably bring the calls up on it and stuff. Anyway, yeah. I don't we're know. Honestly, yeah, we are. But, um, no, we've got some little notes here for our sports one today. First off, I think... One of the things that got me really excited about the sports pod last week was the return of Eddie Jones. Yeah. Uh, we spoke a bit about that. But Eddie has remained in the headlines, which is something that Rugby Australia has failed to do for, I'd say, the last... Ever. Since I can remember. Since Eddie Jones in 2003. Yeah. So 20 years. Which is a years. long time. It's yeah. been a long, long they've been, time. They've made the headlines, but not stayed in but the But they haven't headlines. stayed yeah. there. Eddie's not for the right well. reasons, anyway. No. So, um... What I like is that Peter Vlandis obviously um, allegedly runs the world and he's come out and slams rugby union saying that rugby's a boring sport and that you're going to have an extra 20 minutes. So that means players have an extra 20 minutes to post on social media and it's just a boring game. And they asked Eddie what his thoughts on it were and he just clapped straight back at Peter, which I don't think anyone does. No, shit, no. no one has the balls to do it, but Eddie doesn't give a fuck. So he told him to get out of the TAB and come and watch some Super Rugby. Cop and that. if he has the nuts, basically, to come along with Eddie because he's sending out an invite to him. You know what's so. funny? Like, I... I love rugby league, obviously my number one probably, like more than Union. Also yeah. I do love Union, but yeah. league's my like go-to, right? Yeah, understandably so. League's obviously taken the fat L there. Like Eddie's, yeah. Eddie's won that battle. Ed- Eddie's won that But you know what? Well. I love it. I yeah. love the like – That needs to be that. Up. Yeah, we, we were having this discussion in um, – might as well crack into actually what I was going to do towards the end. But Das brought up a very interesting um, topic yesterday. How much money would it take for you for your team to not – Win. Win the premiership. Because there's a certain someone in my office who has got a bet on to return $1,000 for South Sydney Rabbitohs to win the premiership next year. And I yep. was like, what if the Broncos played the grand final? Who would you want to win? And without hesitation, he was like, Broncos. Yep. And I was like, yep, I 100% agree. Yep. And then we were like, what's the limit? <laughs> like, where do you yeah, stop? Yeah. How much would it have to be? Some of the girls in the office were like, what the fuck is wrong with you boys? Like, yeah. I was like, well, I, I can earn more money next year. Like, yep. the Bronx might never play in the premiership ever, grand final ever again. Yeah, that's it. I don't know what, literally don't know what the limit is. Yeah. I See, initially, I actually thought you were just saying for that year. Oh, well. So I thought the monetary amount for that year. 
Because I, I, but I like as in like I'm going to give you this amount of money, but it means that your team's not going to win the premiership this year. Yeah, right. That's how I saw it. But yeah. now, if it's they will never win again. No, well, it's not that they will never win again, but it's like you don't know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. In my head, mm. imagine if you take the money. Yeah. They don't win, and then they never play another grand final. Yeah. Okay. And you're like, I could have had one. Yeah, I could have experienced. Was that really worth a thousand or whatever? The yeah, was? okay. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. every September, you'd be fucking kicking yourself. Yeah, you'd be like, like why, why, why? I could have helped. Yeah, yeah. this was Fuck. worth so much more than any. Yeah. That's what I. That's what it boils yeah, down to. No, you no, can't I buy like that, that feeling. No, you can't. And as I said in the group chat, we. So why this relates back to Eddie Jones is one of our mates was like, yeah, I'd easily take a thousand dollars for that, and then we put it to him. This is Jackson. Um, Getting a fair run of like Yeah Jackson shout out to his ailments um, <laughs> That's who he is We said to him What if the Wallabies won the Bledisloe And he was like oh, Okay Now yeah, I understand Now, yeah, now, I'm now on the same I understand page. So we're on the same page um, Look I Straight up would not be I don't think I could take It would have to be a ridiculous amount yeah. I know that sounds fucked But I tried to explain it yesterday to the boys I was like I was almost on the verge of tears at the end of winning a fucking sixth grade premiership yeah. last year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's like, it's one of the best feelings. It's fucking like just winning a premiership regardless is such a good feeling. If it's one of the teams that you support that you like put your money towards and then they come away with the chocolates at the end, you feel like you're with them. The way I was thinking about it as well and talking about it was, you know, when Origin's on and it's like yeah. game three decider, how like pumped and yeah. amped and excited you are. Yeah. That's like... Every second year, you have a shot at winning that, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like, how long, we've been alive 27 years, Broncos, I saw it in 06, can barely remember it. Yeah. And then I think before that was 95, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, it was late 90s, I yeah, believe. Yeah, like, don't remember it. Yeah. Like, that. so I've been, let's say I've been following rugby league since, probably, since I was like 10 or whatever that I can yeah. remember. Literally, cannot remember them being in a grand final. Yeah, Like, And I've seen Queensland right. win... Probably 12, 13 series. So. And I think that's what it is at the end of the day, man. It's like, what what do you value more? Like, yeah. Do, and like, I don't think, this is going to sound super dribbly here, but I don't think there's a feeling that matches the feeling absolute, of absolute you know. elation and just like happiness of a grand final victory. Well, yeah, I've done enough of every experience, but I think even a victory in general. Like, I think back to just yeah. regular season wins on yeah. the siren or something. That's your was, your mood is legitimately determined by the weekend, uh, whether like the Broncos did well or not. Yeah, hundred percent. Which is like fucked, but also <laughs> I get it. I cannot imagine how I would be if if I was like like I would love to go to a grand final that the Bronx play in, but yeah. I cannot imagine how I would feel and like the emotions. I don't think I'd be able to bloody survive it. No, dude. Can you imagine? Like, picture this year, right? Yeah. Broncos are in the grand final, and then you get to go down to Sydney for the week. Yeah. I'd be I'd be physically ill. I you, you get to be with the team for the week you know, as well. I, I don't reckon I'd even drink at the grand final. No, I drink because, after the game. Yeah, yeah. But like, you you'd want to be sober for the game. Hundred percent, because you want to remember it. Yeah, ex- exactly. Um, I remember. I think I've spoken about it before, but like, I got fucking super blind. During the grand final against the Sharks. Yeah. And like I cried a lot because yeah. I was so fucked. <laughs> so I cried at the 21st because <laughs> Melbourne lost. <laughs> and I stood up and was like, holy fuck. But I don't remember the final. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I'm sort of happy. Yeah. But, drank um, the pain away. Drank the pain away. But I'm just having a look here. The Broncos, the last premiership besides 06, 06 you should remember, is 2000. Yeah. See, 23 was, years. We were what? Five. We were five. Yeah, I'm not remembering you know I mean? that. Like, you're not going to remember that. I remember where I was for the 06 grand final. I was at my grandparents' house, but I can't really like... Yeah. You don't really appreciate it, I feel, when you're that age. No. We would have been, all. what, fucking 2006, grade six, like 11 or something? Yeah, it would have been 11. Yeah. Yeah. So we've hit double digits. I need another one. I need another one, yeah, is what I'm saying. Say, you, it's fucking... And I don't think there's a, an amount of money that I'd put on that. It's like, actually been to a me, while, man. Like, the it's Bronx, been a long time. Broncos made the grand final and you said to me, I'll give you 50 grand, but the Broncos lose this game. No. I'd be like, sorry, bro. Yeah, no, dude, I I agree. Yeah. I like what's fifty grand over a lifetime? Not it's that not much. much. It's not much at all. And you might never see it again. It's a fucking what about your age plumbing apprentice's way. Okay, what about if it was fifty grand storm grand final? Yeah. Fifty grand and they lose, or you leave the fifty but it's still like they still might lose. You know what I mean? 
Like it's not a guaranteed grand final win. You all need a chance. You know what I mean? I back the boys more yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. You're still not taking it, are you? I'm still not taking yeah. it, no. Um, Fuck, it be shit if they lost. It's fun, look, sort of the same sort of conversation, but um, going back to, say, like American sports, for example. Now, Tom Brady's won six Super Bowls. Yeah. He never takes – he takes a good contract. He gets paid well. But it's always a team-friendly one because yeah. he values – yeah, he winning wants to win championships yeah. over Cash. money. Yeah, and you have a look at all these other dudes who take these big contracts and they're not winning Super Bowls. Yeah, and is then that the, teams, the team can't afford to team can't afford build to get a team around good them. people yeah. around them. Yeah, and my thinking, like, if I was in the same scenario, uh, obviously, if people are throwing ridiculous amounts of money at you, it's like fuck, yeah. like this is pretty sick. But at the same time, like, you've already got a lot of money. Yeah. And I always think that if Especially I was in that situation, I can still play. fucking oath, dude. Yeah. But if I was in that situation, if I'm 30 years old and I'm just about to hit my prime for QB, for example, in the NFL, if I'm being offered even like 16 mil a season, I'm yeah. fucking taking it. Yeah. That <laughs> is a lot 30. of money, man. Shit, yeah. And then that's an extra 30 mil that year that they can spend on other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I've always thought if I was in that same position, this is how highly I value premierships, right? I've always thought if I was in that same sort of position, I would take a team-friendly deal because I'd rather get fucking also, mad cunts or re-sign the boys. You're probably going to earn more in the long run because like, yeah. you're the guy that led the team to X amount of premierships. Yeah, exactly. So it's just it's just ridiculous. It is. You know what I mean? Anyway. All right, so... Fuck. Moving on. We got a bit excited there. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Bring on footy season, honestly. Um, Brings me to my next point. We are so fucking close oh. to the NRL season. Two weeks, the preseason thing starts. That's crazy. So sick. So, so sick. I'm so excited because we do have the addition of the new Brisbane rugby league team, the Dolphins. The Dolphins, yeah. And, you know, I know a lot of Broncos fans out there will be like, fuck them. But I yeah. think it's going to bring this new... Yeah. Because obviously the Broncos-Cowboys is a sick yeah. rivalry. But once the Dolphins get up to scratch, which they might not be that far off this year. Yeah. It'd be fucking sick. Because the Titans, yeah, not bad. But like, Also, it's way closer to home than exactly, the Cowboys all bro, the time. Exactly. So it's like the Crosstown rivalry has me really excited. We There's, don't really have that in Brisbane for any sport, do we? No, we don't, which is fucked. Not at like that level. No, no, no. club no. footy and stuff. Well, I understand but, why. We're nowhere as big as other yeah, places. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, holy fuck, yeah, we Yeah, we're missing it. out on that. We yeah, really sure. need it. It's just going to shit me that these players, these players, these fans that have just jumped ship, bandwagoners, and I can just see the Bronx getting rolled by yep. the Dolphins They're and like, all the you, new bro. fans coming around. I was like, yeah, well, you had a Broncos jersey on last year, bro. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Who's, who's laughing now? Yeah, well, them still, but... <laughs> yeah, but, but it doesn't mean as much, you know? That's it. There's like... Can't, you can't uh, buy history, as we've always said. Yeah. Shout out to the Paddo Tavern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking eyes, you dogs. <laughs> Um, don't sue us. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm I'm very excited. There's a few like a lot of little narratives and stuff happening this year. KP going into six, playing in the halves. Excited to see how Newcastle gels. I'm even talks of Eddie Jones poaching players. Yeah, see, that's all. Like it's yeah. and there's the um, player agreement shit going yeah, on at the yeah, moment, which it's I like, don't understand at all. But I'd rather just be left out of that. To be honest, it's too confusing for my little. Essentially, brain. a little a little thing there. Essentially, all they're doing is um, Kurt Capewell came out with something, and it's like the top end players are sweet with their salaries. It's not about the salaries; it's about protecting past players. Because I didn't know this, but if you retire, the NRL gives you twelve months to get surgery on all, all your, your issues, ailments, and shit. And yeah. then after that, they won't cover you off. Ah, so there'd be so much um, shit that would show up later. Than yeah, that well. I, yeah. D or Dave was saying on Hello Sport when I was listening to it today that Andrew Fafita had it was like eight or nine surgeries in twelve months yeah. to fix up his body. Joe Nullivar, they had a quote from him. I don't know if you remember Joe yeah, Nullivar. Yeah, yeah. He said he retired in 2013 and there's not a single day that goes by that he doesn't have something that reminds him of the injuries of playing rugby league, That's but he's so not brutal. supported. Yeah. So basically this collective bargaining agreement is to... Um, it's more than just the salary cap. It's more, more than, than, the, than salary. the salary. It's yeah. to it's to improve um, the standards for the um, guys on lesser contracts and give them more uh, support and insurance around injury. And then it's also to help players in their post career which i think is fucking sick yeah that's awesome because like yeah it's they're playing footy and it's awesome to play footy but they've worked hard to get there and it's fucking taxing on your body it's also a short window 
very short window. So they've still got to live like another 50, 60 years yeah. after that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that um, the stat is like the average number of um, NRL caps is like 42 or something. Yeah, like I think it's 48. Low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think Kempe not, I say is, very low. It's yeah. Not obviously that's Which is like, that's still three seasons yeah, or so. Yeah, yeah, um, But I think but it's not like someone that. who's played 300 or, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So... Yeah, there's that. Um, but yeah, there's just all these things happening. Cheese, going to the Roosters, see how that goes. Magic round um, will be amazing. Again. Magic round, fucking keen eyes for that. But how good is that? Um, next thing, I think the Australian cricket team, particularly the T20 team, is probably counting their losses and seeing what they've missed out on. Steve Smith. With Steve Smith. He's how a fucked. fucking unbelievable batsman. Eh? It's ridiculous. Now, I said we're not a... Podcast about stats, but this fucking this stood is, out. He's a me. stat. This is ridiculous. Steve Smith has played four Big Bash games so far. He's number seven on the top run scorers list for the season with 328 runs at an average of 109.33, a top score of 125, one not out, and he's hit the most sixes, 24 sixes in four games. And the next close, tied on 18, is um, Matt Short. Who's played every game for the yeah, Strikers. because Smith's been playing for Australia. Because Smith's been playing for Australia and fucking killing it. Now, yeah. we wind back the clock a bit. Stephen Smith played one game for us yeah. at the World Cup against Afghanistan. And Tim David took his spot. Yeah. Now, Tim David. Great cricketer. He's but. actually also tying with Matt Short for most sixes at yeah. 18. Yeah. Sorry, second most because Stephen's Steve got more in four yeah. games than yeah. they have in 13. But that's besides the point. I think that going forward, hopefully – now, T20 to me isn't the pinnacle of cricket. Shit, no. Test, test cricket yeah, is. Obviously. But T20 starting to go above one day. Yeah. Um, just because – One day is almost redundant now. Hey? One day seems sort of redundant because it's like the first 10 overs are quick hours and then the next 30 is just nothing. Yeah. And then the last 10 are fucking it's quick hours. It's like T20 was just a whole heap of filler in the middle. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So um, – yeah, it starts to get a bit shit, but I think we just need to pick the fucking best cunts for the yeah. job. Who do you reckon has had a better, like, who has a better impact off the pine? Steve Smith, Smith obviously off the pine in the World Cup now, mm. leading run scorer in the big yeah. bash. Yourself. Off the pine, Ooh. wins a sixth grade premiership. Yeah, well, I kept my spot, didn't I? Very so true. It Something it, Steve yeah. Smith didn't do. Yeah, Steve Smith didn't keep his spot in that Australian T20 team. So so. Ultimate athlete yeah. award. So, obviously, like, I might not offer heaps, <laughs> but they know what I could offer. You give heaps. I give heaps. And then they know that if I'm going out there and they ask me to do a task, that I'm, I'm actually going to do exactly what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because most of the time, that's the only thing I can do. You know, stand on the wing and get the ball twice and run... Um, 50 You've meters. done your job His yeah. job was to be The oh. leading run scorer He's done it You did your job That's You got it. the premiership yeah, That's all that matters Basically Steve Smith And I are the same person Yeah Which is pretty crazy To think about In the scheme of things Very crazy to think about You know One's a dude Who lays a bit of pull up And plays a bit of footy And the other one is Possibly shadow, the greatest Cricketer of all time Shadow batting in his whites With his wife in bed yeah. At 3 o'clock in the morning Or something And yelling when he gets out Yeah I need to watch the test I'm pretty keen to <laughs> Yeah I need to watch the test too um, I saw a TikTok the other day Actually It was like the best blow ups From the test And yeah. it's like different people Getting angry Yeah right There's something about like David Warner got out He's like Can't believe I fucking Got out to him <laughs> Can't believe I got out to that He's like throwing some shit in his bag and then he's ripped open the door of the fridge and then he's trying to open up a bottle of water but he can't open it up. And he's just like slammed the fridge and it's just rocking there. And I was like, holy fuck. Love a good cricket you know, blow up. They could do, if they had a camera in the change rooms at all times yeah. and they Live just did strength. a huge, imagine that. It's like, what we just had the 2022, 2023 season. Can you imagine if they just at the end put together a big, YouTube clip and it's like this is the blow up. David want to smash him back. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, I would watch the shit out of that. It's just like Steve Smith shouting. Can we get one of the Jeeps change rooms? Yeah. Or for this season? Can I say? A little bit of a possible behind the scenes. We'll see what's happening. Yeah. Here. Um our coach Shorey yeah. is trying to organise uh um Drive to Survive type filming of sixth grade this Fuck year. off. Legit? <laughs> yeah. That is so sick. So um yeah, we're looking we're looking into how to do it. So um yeah, if you're ever free on a Friday night, yeah. 
come film some maybe Bob baby bacon gonna, like part funded and we'll that'll be fucking sick i can because we're like it'd be a youtube series yeah you just put it out and just make it super dribbly and then it would be like get a few of the boys and get their thoughts afterwards and like turn the fucking thing off but i think there was a rule that's like turn the light off i think there was a rule no filming after say nine thirty. <laughs> That's usually a few beers, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and definitely no filming after midnight because <laughs> it's just it's not going to be good. I don't think end anyone, up in prison. No one wants to see the Mill Hunter noon. No shit. Um, no. Speaking of Jeeps, though, I forgot. I've had one big um, nomination for the Jeep sixth grade ten position. Yep. And it comes from none other than Dave McKenzie. Yep. We love this. He we sent put us the fields a few. out last week. He just, just last week? whatever it was. Yeah, it was last week. Just so people know what they need to do and what they should um, aim for, strive for. Yeah, strive for. That's a good way of putting it. He has given me like nine dot points. He's sent them <laughs> through here. I'm writing to you today to provide why I am the man for the ten position for Jeeps in 2023. One, my kicking ability is slim to zero, so a lot of running rugby will be played. It's a photo of him putting in what looks like a terrible kick. I love ruck and malls, and it's him just like getting standing upright, getting poleaxed in a mall. Um, this is me taking an intercept in the dying moments to get us into a grand final. That's Speaks fucking for itself, sick. obviously. And there is a big ooze chasing, chasing him down. Yeah. So you know that he fucking... Oh, the dude looks fucking familiar. Don't know why. Anyway, um, this is my pa- uh, personal favourite. I'm a hot boy, even making into opposition's Tinder pictures. So there's a picture of him chasing this dude down with the ball. And uh, shout out to Will, who's 22. Message me on Snapchat. Username is that. Um, probably won't say that. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Anzac is my middle name. So um, Anzac is my middle name. Interesting. Very dribbly. Big on Silly Sundays. as They dressed up as the Jamaican bobsled team. Can handle my piss. Uh, it's a selfie of him yakking in a toilet. Now, the next two are fucking awesome. <laughs> And um, one of them is actually pretty fucked. He said he can take a hit. And yeah. as we know, Dave is a trot driver. Yeah. And he fucking gets thrown out the back. And run over. And just got run <laughs> over. And then the last one was he has a nice bum. And he just comes running out of nowhere and just jumps to the camera. I showed my dad that and he thought it was hilarious. Um, and then actually, sorry, there was one more point. He's got a photo of him giving the don't argue to New Zealand Warriors hooker Wayne Egan or Wade Egan. Yeah. Respect. Um, yeah. And he, he's just getting past so him. So have you found your man for 10? I think we could have. <laughs> yeah. Um, the poll hasn't closed yet, but that is the sort of nomination. That's literally the that's ideal nomination I was yep. looking for. So That'd be great narrative for the drive to survive. Doco, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would be. And then we could just like do like a bit of a where have you been and where are you now? Sort yeah, of thing. 100%. Um, got a couple more things to carry. Oh, sorry to um, cover off here. So obviously we've had Michael Clark. Yep. And Carlos. And Carlos in the papers because Clark has been a bit of a dirty dog with his ex miss Yeah. Is that confirmed? Yeah. Well, I don't really know. Well, the I think that. based off what Pip has said. Yeah. His ex being like, you lied to me. Yeah. Um, and I'm now I'm not surprised because this is the sort of person you are. And then looking also at his previous dating history of how he just, I don't know, gets a few runs on the board and then gets himself out. <laughs> In true Clarky style. Yeah. Um, he does have a lot of runs on the board. He does have a lot of runs on the board. Plenty of innings, plenty of different partners in those innings. So, yeah, off the back of off the back of him just, I don't know, basically being asked to be bashed by his missus, which is pretty fucked in itself. So and fucked. then doing his hammy and apparently has a huge bruise now because it's that's, that fucked. That's the funniest part. I it. think that's hilarious. Yeah. Gets pushed over, does a hammy. Yeah, so funny. He's a lead athlete. What's um, an elite athlete? We're trying to think of some other times that, like, ex-sports stars or sports stars coming to the end of their careers have done some shit and it's just, just been, like... Gone up to great heights. Yeah, so, first and foremost, Shane Warne and many of his late-night yeah. expeditions. We won't go into the details of any of them, but no, surely man. people know what we're talking there about. There was one even the start of last year, man. Oh, was it? And it was, like, oh. him with three chicks yeah. in his bed. I remember that. And he's just on his phone. He's just all laid back. I was like, fucking hell. Like, the king. This dude's just doing the damn thing. <laughs> yeah. So shout out to Warney. Uh, may you rest in peace. 
Then we've got Brendan Favola at the Brown Line. Pressure point, pressure point, pressure point. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best videos of all time. So fucking funny. Um, actually, I want to circle back to Carl, even though he's not an ex player. Do you he's remember fucking, after the Logies one year where yeah. he went and he's a straight more? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, respect. Fucking, I reckon he's done that a few times. But uh, Joey Johns, yep. he missed out on a grand final, watching a grand final, because he got kicked off an aeroplane in Toowoomba. And he'd slept And there's in just the this photo of him just sleeping on his bag on yep. the floor in the T-Bar airport. Yeah. Which is possibly being one there. of the smallest airports in Queensland. <laughs> We've all been there. Um, Brett Lee. So he just got into Bollywood. <laughs> yeah. And then Darcy just let me know that him and his brother Shane Lee... Have a band. Have a band called Six and Out. Yeah. Apparently there's a story. I can't remember it exactly. Yeah. I feel like I've been saying this a lot on the podcast lately. Like, don't quote me. But his brother had like a CD collection in a car and someone broke into his car and yeah. stole his CDs except for his own Six and Out CD. <laughs> Fucking the disrespect. <laughs> that is that is so shit. Um, and then last one, just blokes getting into random jobs. Jobs. Yeah. So Jason Akimanis is now a real estate agent. Yeah, rocked. Imagine rocking up an Akos. Have you seen a photo of him? He's got a big beard. Yeah, like in a Cobra. He looks shit. different, man. Looks so different. Um, and then Tony Carroll as well. Tony Carroll actually got called by Wayne Bennett out of retirement a few years ago. Do you remember that? No. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure Tony Carroll was retired and they had like a bunch of injuries. I'll see if I can find Oh, him. and he came back and played for the Bronx. And he came back and played for the Bronx. I do remember that. Which is, is that not mental? That is fucked. He's done, but Wayne Bennett has a history of just calling back throbbers. I'll feel Langer. Fuck, yeah. it's funny watching Klutz trying to figure out this laptop. Yeah, it's fucked, bro. I don't really, I don't know. I've got to experience it a bit more. I love the uh, the zooming magnification of it. <laughs> um, but if we go Tony Carroll... Yeah, um, Super Coach Wayne. It's that's the thing that scares me most about the Dolphins. I've got Wayne. Wayne's too good. How yeah, often does Wayne teams not. miss the eight? Not often. Yeah, no, he doesn't at all. Fuck. Tony Carroll back for the Broncos. There we go. I remember so so clearly being young, getting the bus into a Broncos game with my dad, and I was like, it's probably six, and this guy got on outside the Eddy, which is near my place, yeah. a pub, and he was maggot. Yeah. The bus was so full and the bloke the whole way from Kedron to Suncor, which would be like half an hour, was just going, the chin, the chin, <laughs> the chin will win. The chin, the chin, the chin will win. Fuck Talking about hell. Tony Carroll. That's so good. It's when they handed out all the cutouts of his face and shit. Dude, they, that was a big cutout as yeah, well. Yeah, huge cutout. Um, so I was wrong here, actually. He did come out of retirement, but... Wayne Bennett had already gone to the Dragons and was trying to get him. But Uh, Tony Carroll, age 33, uh, announced he would come out of retirement to help the battling NRL team for the rest of the season. Ivan Hendrak was coach. He saw the Broncos were struggling. So came out of retirement. That's fucking sick. Respect. That's a lot of respect. Utmost respect. So shout out to him for doing that. Um, Now, last thing. Darcy has put up something on the Instagram story yesterday. And it is in relation to preseason training. Preseason training and how it fucking sucks. Someone so. reached out during last week, I think, and um, asked for Josh's, you know, a bit of a pump up from Josh for preseason. And essentially, Josh's advice was just don't go. So yep. um, we've put up an Instagram story to try and get some of the best um, excuses out there that the yep. Frothies have got. And I just want to run them by you and hear your thoughts, Josh. So. Okay. Uh, sorry, coach. I'm preserving my energy for the actual season. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Because you can't fuck, really argue with that. You can't actually argue with that, particularly the older fellas. Yeah. Like, you um, can only have three games in you for yeah. the whole year. You don't want to fucking waste time at Mate, training. We legit offer to, there's some people who, like, you try and get them back, and then it's like halfway through the season, and it's like, you, you have to play six games to qualify. Yeah. If that's all you got in you, six games to qualify for finals do. will take you. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Done. Happens everywhere. Yeah. That's that's your excuse then. Six mm. game rule. Yeah. Um, my excuse is that you don't need fitness to ride the pine for 80 minutes. That's so fucking fair. There's a lot of people that cop that as well. And particularly <laughs> at the... Um, now, what I find fucked is there's some fellas... So say like you don't have many teams at a club. I always feel bad for... There's the fellas that rock up and they're pretty fucking shit. Yep. And they just put in all the time at training and they ride the pine for sometimes the whole game. Yep. Particularly when it gets to the pointy end of the season. Yeah. Um, and you need to actually get, get your the best wins. Players. Yeah. yeah. It's like, fuck. There's some blokes who just, 
can't be fucked rocking up or who just don't rock up because they can't. Yeah. And then there's this dude who's been there all the time. Just putting in work. It's like, fuck, sorry, dude. Yeah. Like, don't be that guy that doesn't turn up. If you if you have a legitimate Yeah, if you reason. have a legitimate excuse. Yeah. Like, fuck, I was meant to go to training tonight. Yeah. But, um, legitimate excuse. We got work. Yeah, we got work. Yeah. Which is, yeah, I can actually call it work now. Yeah. So that's fucking Bang. sick. Got a laptop, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shout out to tax. <laughs> Um, the next one Cheetahs sleep 12 hours a day Can't be fast on your feet Unless you're well rested Fuck I've never heard that before But it all makes sense Some of the fastest people I know Probably sleep the most Exactly It's like cats bro Yourself included Yeah <laughs> Cats and dogs man Those cunts are quick Sle- And they sleep all the time And they sleep all the time None of them have to go to work And then footy training No they don't Doesn't explain mum though She sleeps a fair bit And she's not that quick So <laughs> I, th- I don't think just because you do sleep all the time means you're quick, but well, if that's you want to be quick, no, 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 but not all people who sleep all the time are mm. quick, but if you want to be quick, you got to sleep all the time. Yeah, okay, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, There's got to be other sense. factors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this one's simple. Uh, just one word, chafe. Yeah, well, I haven't had chafe for about a year and a half, two years now, so there you go. I can't use that anymore. But I feel like no one's going to get down there and check. No. So well, a great excuse. if i got the banana undies on, they will. <laughs> Scratch and sniff. Yeah, scratch and sniff, baby. Keep your fingers away. <laughs> um, this one's pretty funny. Rare case to myself, but shag is hip. Should be right for the first game on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one um, that I've been in a footy team with has ever used that as an excuse. <laughs> legitimately, anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, not legitimately, no. <laughs> um, and this one was more of a story, but it's uh, this bloke said, a mate missed all of preseason uh, because he told everyone he got called up to the Waratahs. The local paper ended up doing a story on him. It was all bullshit. Fucking hell. <laughs> I think I can't remember if I've told this before, but there was a fellow that rocked up to Jeeps last year and he messaged um, Matty Muller before he left um, his role at the club. It was like, hey, like I'm coming over from France. I'm coming back from France. Um, I've played for Toulon. Yeah. Um, I'm looking to get into the premier grade system and our club policy, doesn't matter who you are, unless you have actually played for us before and we know who the fuck you are. And you're going to go into prems. You've got to start in third grade. Yeah. Work your way up. Improve yourself. Because it'd be fucked to just have any person rock As up. As you say, say, some bloke's been toiling away in, in prems. Exactly, and they just get bumped mate, by some By guy some who. dude. So we were like, nah. And he goes, nah, my contract says I can't play anything lower than reserve grade. Yeah, because right. I'm a Toulon player. Anyway. This bloke ended up not coming to Jeeps. Yeah. And then... Went to Norths. Yep. Played reserve grade at Norths. Now, look, I like Norths. Yeah. But as I've said before, they suck. Shit house when it comes <laughs> to on the field stuff, off the field stuff. Fuck, they're up there. They're yeah, really, yeah, really absolutely. up there. On the field, though, fucking atrocious. And there was a game they played in the wet against Jeeps Reggie's, and this bloke was playing in it. I think they got done like 80 or 90 nil, basically. And, and that's knows, a wet weather game. Everyone knows off the field's more important than on the field. Yeah, not in this case, though. <laughs> Fuck those guys. Um, but this dude was playing for them, and he got the ball, and he was running it up, and it was one of the slowest like runs I've ever seen. And then Ben Byrne just came out of nowhere and absolutely whacked Rolled him. him. Yeah. And it was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. You love it. But it's just so funny because everyone at Jeeps knows that that guy is it's trying to guy. claim that he's Toulon player. Yeah. So everyone was out for yeah, him as yeah, well. Yeah. Let's put a, put a marker on his yeah. back on this, yeah. There's also another fellow who used to run around the club who um, probably won't say his name because he'll probably try and sue us. But um, he at one point said he was like an Italian rugby uh, rugby union player. For the, yeah, um, for the said he went over, Said he went over to Italy and played like fucking international. Yeah. And um, it was like barely cracking fourth grade <laughs> at Jeeps. Respect. So, um, yeah. There's a lot of them out there that just waffle, waffle, waffle. Unlike us. Unlike us. You know, I've earned my spot in sixth grade. <laughs> yeah, it's my off the field performances. Yeah, 27 years of nearly 28 years. Nearly 28 years yeah. of um, toiling, of just eating. <laughs> <laughs> 22 yeah. to go, baby. 22 to go. <laughs> Hang on, what's the day today, actually? 24th of oh, January. How did you not know that? Shit. It's, oh, yeah, true. Tomorrow's your birthday. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, Bull. Um, yeah, pretty fucked. Anyway. Let's get out of here. We'll uh, we'll see you Monday for the calls, but thank you for tuning in. See you Saturday at Revel at Morningside. Rivermakers. Fucking oath. We'll see you there. Bye-bye, drivers. Bye.